Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to take a look at who is Kavica Karatskalia, the Georgian wonder kid tearing up Italy. Remember to subscribe if you are new, but anyway, smash that like button and let's get this party started. Born in Trabolsi, Georgia on the 12th of February 2001, Kavara is a full Georgian international who plays for Napoli. Kavara Skila began his career at Dynamo Trabolsi, learning his trade at one of the most successful football clubs in Georgian football. Kavara made his senior debut for Trabolsi on September the 29th, 2017 as a second half substitute against Kolaka Heti Potti, going on to assist the equaliser. Ahead of the 2018 season, Kravatskalia signed for Rustavi, making 18 appearances and being directly involved in six goals, and ultimately be named in the Guardian's next generation for 2018, alongside the likes of Eric Garcia, Thiago Almada, and Rodrigo. Krava spent the first half of the 2019 season on loan at Lokomotiv Moscow, largely featuring from the bench before Ruben Kazan signed the then 18-year-old for €600,000. Over the next two seasons and a half, Kravat Scalia was directly involved in 27 goals in 73 appearances for Ruben Kazan, but after Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, he was free to leave the club. Krava returned to Georgia with Dynamo Batum in 2022, scoring eight goals in 11 Georgian top flight appearances before Napoli swooped, signing the 21-year-old for a reported nine million. In 2022, Kravat Scalia has scored 20 goals and registered 13 assists in just 31 appearances for club and country. And since 2019, he's won four individual player of the season awards, but where does he play? Kravat Scalia is a dynamic forward. He's played the majority of his minutes on the left wing, but has also featured on the right at number 10 and even up front. Despite his versatility, he has thrived on the left flank for Napoli. He's a very complete wide player that's just as comfortable at holding the width and making runs in behind the defence, or receiving balls to feet and dribbling directly at his opponent. As he is moving into central areas, receiving passes in tight spaces between the opposition's lines. He's able able to thrive in all areas of the pitch because he's so well-rounded. Krava has great close control and has the ability to manipulate the ball to dribble past players, but he's also got a very good first touch. He's also a very good passer of the ball, with a weight of pass befitting to a culture playmaker, not a dribbling winger. But Kavara also has a good footballing IQ, which helps him to make good decisions on the pitch. And finally, not only is he a real physical handful, quick, agile, strong with great endurance, but he's extremely determined. The result is an unbelievably intense player that never gives up. Krava will constantly try to beat his man, and even if he gets bodied the first time, he'll come back with more intensity the next time. What's quite common is he'll break through tackles whilst dribbling. So a defender will get a foot in, but the ball will still break through for Kravat Scalia. You can tell he's not getting lucky bounces, because not only does it happen in most games, but I've seen him break multiple tackles in the same attack. The way he beats players reminds me of Luis Suarez, a player with as much impressive technical skill as determination and will to win. However, he's far more dynamic than Suarez and is extremely two-footed, making him a nightmare to defend against. Fortunately for defenders, he tends to keep his dribbling to the final third, or in counter-attacking situations, where he has the space and license to attack. Although as a player, this is even more impressive. Using the data from Instat, Gravara averages 9.9 .9 dribbles per 90 in all competitions this season. And whilst he's completed less than half of them, 76% of his unsuccessful dribbles are in the opponent's half so he's not losing the ball in dangerous areas. Basically, Kavart Scalia uses dribbling to make things happen in the final third, not only for progression, and this is supported by the stats. Despite ranking in the top 1% of wingers per 90 for carries into the final third, he ranks in the bottom 6% for carries into the final third. But when he does get into the final third, his combination of dynamism and quick feet combined with his determination to break tackles make him nearly undefendable. When dribbling, he can cut inside and get a powerful shot away, go on the outside, hit the byline to create for his teammates, or he can dribble through the defender, break their tackles with brute forcing his way into dangerous situations and positions. He is a properly complete threat on the dribble, which is highlighted by the fact that he ranks second in Syria for carries ending in a key pass and second in the Champions League for carries ending in a shot. 
ultimately with four carries directly ending in a goal in just 14 appearances for Napoli this season. But there's even more to his game than dribbling. His awareness and passing are phenomenal. This makes him extremely dangerous in central areas because not only can he drive towards the goal and provide a threat from range, like his banger that we saw against Monza in his third start for Napoli, but Kvarat Scalia can also unlock a defence with his passing. We saw this against Bologna. With Napoli in possession around halfway, Jesus carries and finds Zielinski, who shapes the play right, but turns left and finds Krava, who receives in between the lines on the half turn and can drive at the defence. With plenty of options, the winger turns and slips Osimhen through to finish, winning the game for Napoli. This goal looks simple, but it highlights the intelligent side of Kravat Scalia's game. First, when Jesus has the ball, he's holding the width stretching the Bologna back line and creating space for his teammates. Then as the play unfolds, Rui advances from left back which allows Krava to roam. He spots the huge space in between the lines and darts into it. When he receives the pass, he has a quick check over his shoulder and can see where the striker is before he acts, controlling with one touch, setting himself with another and then slipping Osimhen in behind with a perfect through ball. But Kravat Scalia isn't just about attacking, he's also a very dedicated defender and good presser and ranks in the top 2% of wingers across Europe's top 5 leagues for tackles won in the final third. So what's next for the talented Georgian? His rise has been incredible. He already looks like one of the very best players in Serie A. However, it's still early days in his career, and whilst he looks right at home in the Champions League, staying at Napoli is best for both the player and the club. If Cravadonna can live up to his namesake and guide Napoli to the Scudetto, he'll become an icon at the club, and in doing so, he'll put himself at the top of every transfer shortlist in Europe. But anyway guys, what do you think? Where will Cravat Scalia be playing next season? How long should he stay at Napoli? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you later. Later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?